Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live at Amazon reInvent. This is theCUBE. We go out to the events and start to see some of the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Stu Miniman. And uh, fresh off the keynote, we squeezed in special presentation, Ben Gallup, CEO of Docker. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE. Yeah, thank you very much. Great, Great to, to see you smiling. Did you close a round of funding this week? <laughs> well, um, you know, we decided we need to pace ourselves. You know, <laughs> you know, Uber, I mean, Every other week. Oh yeah, well, yeah, there's, <laughs> there, there, there's a model to follow there. <laughs> So I said to Jerry Chen yeah, last yeah. night, I go, look at your first investment, you did great, don't uh -huh. screw this up. So you're the guy. You know, interesting, because he screw. turns around and he says to me, don't screw this up for me, man. So. It, you guys are winning pretty good. It's great to yeah. see. I mean, I love, to yeah. me, the rally, when you see inflection points yeah. and yeah. shifts going on yeah, in the yeah, industry yeah. at the same time, it's pretty magical. But when you see a company kind of galvanize an, an entire ecosystem like you guys have. It's been real special to watch and, and that's what's really been happening. The big story is you guys, it's just Docker, 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 just the freedom, yeah, the yeah. interoperability, handling a lot of mundane steps for developers. Right. Uh, it's been fantastic, congratulations. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you know, we, I think we always say, look, if we can liberate developers from all that mun mundane activity, right? If we can free the application from the infrastructure, Great things are going to happen for everybody, and we're happy to be part of that. All right, so I got to ask you, you came out on stage, and I, it was funny, it was almost like you wanted to take Q&A, but you didn't have time for Q&A. Didn't have time for Q&A, <laughs> so, yeah. So we'll do it here. So um, one, just give us a quick rundown of how this all came together. Obviously Amazon, great poster child in the cloud, sure. great Docker uh, platform to work with you guys on. What, what, how did this all come together, and what, did, what was the key announcement for you? Well, like most great business announcements at Docker these days, it actually starts in IRC with developers working in open source. So folks down in the AWS organization were working with our developers and we said, we should do something more exciting here. Um, but at the end of the day, what this announcement was really about was, gee, how can we enable developers who love AWS and who love Docker to use the two of them together, right? And deploy Docker containers across availability zones and make it possible to do things like orchestration and scheduling. And so this was really a natural uh, development between the two of us. One of the challenges of uh, companies when they're in this yeah. business, and you know, you're a student of the industry, um, mm -hmm. is when you have this kind of Switzerland yeah. mindset, you, there's a risk of becoming an arms dealer. Sure. Um, when you have platforms that are trying to compete against each other. How do you approach that? I mean, obviously Amazon's great. We were just at the, the Google Cloud uh, uh, yeah. conference last week. And obviously Google's got a lot going on. You're a big part of sure. that, that too. So you're balancing your, your neutral third party, I guess, between players. Sure, sure. How do you balance that? How do you avoid being the arms dealer, even though you're technically the <laughs> arms dealer? Well, I mean, Docker's not really an arms dealer. We're not an know, arms but dealer. But you know what I'm saying. No, no, but we, you know, we actually <laughs> sort of internally say, look, we've got lots of big guys who are working with us who don't all really like each other, <laughs> right? And so if we play our cards right, we're Switzerland. If, if we play it wrong, we end up being Poland and they sort of run over us. <laughs> um, uh, and I think, at the end of the day, we just default to doing what's right for developers, yeah. and for most of these guys, I think at the end, they have to do what's right for developers too, because if they try and lock people in, if they try to avoid heterogeneity, they get killed. And I know Sue wants to jump in, but I want to, on that point, double down on that. Yeah. In the old days, it was Switzerland where you had that risk, but now you have the developer community. I think what's interesting about Docker is it's a nice equalizer, mm -hmm. this new force. Uh, you see it that way as well? And yeah, I, look, I think, I think developers have an enormous amount of power. They influence what Vendors do and they influence what happens inside the operating room. That's uh, right, in, inside of operations. So if we do a good job with developers and we can encourage these large companies around us to do what's right for developers too, then I think, I think we'll all win. Yeah, so Ben, uh, since you guys are working with all the major cloud guys, I mean, you've now got right. Amazon, you've got Microsoft, you've got Google, yeah. uh, and more, uh, you guys can really be an enabler of that multi-cloud world because right. customers aren't just doing one. Even companies that we talk to that are all in on Amazon, they're using other services, they're using other people. Sure. Where, what, what do you see as Docker's role in making it easier for customers to you know, write their software application once and you know, not have to think about what infrastructure as a service layer that they're on? Right, well that, that's exactly the point. We want to make it possible for developers to build these uh, distributed applications which have multiple different components, all of which get Dockerized, and have them interact well with each other, and really not worry about the infrastructure. The infrastructure can be whatever happens to be best for them. If that's on-premise, if it's VMware, if it's Red Hat, if it's 
uh, Google, if it's Amazon, you know, we don't personally care, and they shouldn't care. They should be able to go wherever is best for them. All right, so, so Ben, we just spent over a decade fixing the challenges that VMware brought to the ecosystem. Storage, networking got much more difficult. So, you know, what, what are you seeing with, with Docker, with containers? Uh, I've seen lots of other projects. You've got Cluster HQ doing Flocker. Sure. Uh, you know, there's networking security and storage. H how's the ecosystem coalescing around uh, Docker? Well, it's great. I mean, there's obviously a ton of activity happening uh, in all the areas you talked about. Storage, network, composition, scheduling. What we as Docker are trying to do is make sure that all of these things, which are really about making multiple Docker containers work well together, that they don't do it in a way that suddenly breaks portability and breaks that clean separation from the infrastructure. So at Docker, we're doing a lot of work to build clean APIs around things like storage and networking uh, and scheduling, and then letting things like Flocker or Kubernetes plug in. All right, so I, I loved your, your comment on stage that you said Docker is only an 18 month year old company <laughs> and it should be like a kid, it should be spitting up on itself, yeah, yeah. barely figuring out you know, yeah, how yeah. to walk, not uh, running what well. Uh, at DockerCon you had 42 employees, so obviously it was the enter of life, the universe and everything. Sure. I think you've got 75 now. Well tell me, give us well, the update. Well we, ha we okay. have actually 70 but we have a pet turtle. So you know, he, when he walks across uh, the keyboard he depresses the keys. Excellent, if we could strap a rocket pack to the back of it, Cumulus would be happy, they'll, uh, yeah, they'll, right, they'll yeah, work yeah. on some of that. T talk to us a little bit, Inside, how do you guys you know, move as fast as you are without tripping over your feet? Uh, and you know, how do you keep moving as fast and, and, and building the company? So we've just had to embrace being open, right? Uh, open internally in terms of how we communicate, but really more importantly, leveraging the whole open source ecosystem. I mean, so for example, you saw our announcement with Microsoft uh, where they're going to be making Docker work on Windows. Now that's a huge technical undertaking. If we do this right, There'll be about 25 people from Microsoft working on it, two people from Docker Inc., and a lot of folks from the community doing it in the open, getting examined in the open, QA'd in the open, and you sort of multiply that by everything, that's how we can make this work. We, we can't all do it on our own. Yeah, if I saw right, actually, some of the early bits of code are actually available now, is that what I saw? They're, they're actually available, and okay. as, as we've said many times, there are over 600 people who are contributing to the Docker project, and we're 70 people total inside the company. Uh, there are over 50,000 Dockerized applications available in Docker Hub. Obviously, we've only had work to do with a fraction of those. Ben, what have been some of the questions you've been getting here? Obviously, I'm going to do some Q&A now. I've got a few minutes left in the segment. What's the questions you're getting here? Backstage, I'm sure you got rushed after the stage sure. uh, presentation, in meetings. Right. Uh, what's the, what's the, some of the buzz and interactions that you've had and what, what can you share? Well, I think, I think what's really exciting is we're hearing from lots of more traditional enterprises now. We used to get you know, buzzed by the, by the web companies, now we're getting the banks and the telcos and the, and the healthcare companies, and they're really asking what is the right approach, what's the right infrastructure to use, and for some of those we say, hey, for infrastructure, choose what you want to do. Uh, and then the right approach is really start with development, move gradually through to QA into production, and then use the things that are in the ecosystem that, that work well for you. On the development front, do you see this as a nice bridge between the two worlds? And what is the coolest thing that you've seen come out of the Dockerization mega trend that's been going on over the past eight months? Well, you know, I think the really cool thing for me, uh, you know, beyond a lot of the cool applications you've seen, like the guy doing Google Glass for healthcare this morning, um, is that for the first time in my memory, dev and ops aren't fighting. They're actually agreeing on something. And, and that means that dev can be as creative as it wants to be, and still allow ops to build something that's secure and has uptime and automatable. And that to me is, is So Docker's the peace treaty for we're, cloud growth. We're bringing peace and harmony and, yeah. and, and love to the world. You know, it's interesting. That, we, that, that's going to be our new man. Post.com bubble, we saw a lot of you know, people trying to figure out all these sacred cows, but when people aren't making any money, mm -hmm. the norms in the, are formed really quickly around, <laughs> right. quickly standardizing around de facto. Hey, yeah. we can agree quickly, if, we, if these things happen, we all can move forward right. peacefully right. and make more money, right? So that's kind of a Docker moment, right? Would you agree that that's kind of an analogy that you could say that, hey, all this stuff, like some, con not conflicting directly, but like just friction, you know, around these dependencies. I'm a developer, the DevOps kind of piece. Yeah. Um, is it similar to that? Is it that peace pill or peace treaty? Well, you know, look, I mean, uh, you know, I'd always rather be a raging bull than a sacred cow, but um, I think what we're starting to see is, is that people all get that if you make the developers more productive and if you separate the issues of development from, development, from the issues of, of ops, really everybody can do better. And so you can get uh, harmony not through this sort of 
DevOps uh, fantasy of everybody's going to sit together and sing Kumbaya, yeah, but if yeah. you can let as the concerns be separated, dev does what dev, it needs to do, ops needs to do what it needs to do, and there's a nice clean separation between them, then actually everybody wins. Okay, so what's the deal with Amazon? So what specifically is on paper, what's, what's the actual framework of the deal, and what's your vision of it moving forward? Yeah, um, so with Amazon, we basically committed to making sure that Docker runs exceptionally well on Amazon, and that we continue to collaborate in terms of having Amazon uh, work well with Docker Hub, so people have access to the 50,000 and growing Dockerized applications, and we've committed to working together on all of these open orchestration APIs, so that what Amazon builds to make things work really well in Amazon doesn't break when you go on-premise or to some other cloud provider. Awesome. Yeah. So Ben, you talk about you've built such a big ecosystem. You've got open source uh, yeah. contributing to all of it. How do you guys orchestrate? You know, we've said sometimes, <laughs> you know, does an open source project need you know, an overlord watching over things or can the community take care of things? And how do you build a business uh, that can be successful leveraging open source? There's only one billion dollar open source company out there today. Right. So you know, obviously it's early days, but what's your vision as to how, how Docker helps this community move forward? Right, well, so the interesting thing for us is that we always talk about how there's this nice clean separation with Docker between the concerns of dev and the concerns of, of ops. And it also gives us a nice clean separation in our business model. So everything Docker open source engine is really all about making the developer more productive and providing a clean interface. And then our commercial model is based on selling commercial management software to operations to help them manage a world where there are Docker containers everywhere and running across lots of different infrastructures. So and it's really clean for us. Oh, sorry about that, go ahead. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you coming on. What's the forecast next year? What's on your to-do list as CEO? We asked you this last time. Is this still the same hire and keep growing? What's your, what's your goal? I mean, obviously more partnerships. I mean, yeah. what's, what's next? What's the next couple months look like for you? Yeah, for, for, for me it's really simple. It's, it's three things. It's we've got to make this multi-Docker uh, container model work really well with orchestration, storage, networking, et cetera. We've got to launch our commercial software uh, and start servicing the 200 plus uh, companies that are on our wait list for that product. Uh, and then we've got to really just make you know, the ecosystem sing. And if we do that, I think everything else falls into place. And the monetization, you guys look at that as, you know, that's kind of like the Twitter equation. You down the road, monetization, if you try to over grab too early. Well, uh, we, we always, you know, right now, certainly we, we err on the side of adoption rather than monetization. But we have, as I said, a very good business model based off of selling commercial management software to operations to help in a world where Docker open source yeah. is making developers more productive. So it's great premium conversion, that's all yeah. classic. Well, congratulations here at Amazon. Okay. Docker headlining the show again, well, on day two. Um, <laughs> appreciate <laughs> you coming Rousing ovation from the audience twice yeah. uh, you know, ah. for the Docker stuff. Very good cool. crowd, not a marketing show here at reInvent. Amazon you know, continuing to do great things around innovation and obviously now Dockerization, embracing Docker with Amazon. A good move for them. Uh, with the crowd approval and, and Stu's approval, which is great. So this is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after the short break. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman, we'll be right back.